Bob Mennery, I don't know, I guess he called him out recently. Bob Mennery was, um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Bob Mennery got tight. Let's see. Let me see. Here we go. Is it this? Here we go. I was that boss. Not with me. But at the same time, Full Send has a big audience of fucks with them. You know, I was like, I don't want to go at them, whatever. But you know what? At the end of the day, I was fucked. I was told one thing and I didn't get it. And I was fucking lied to. And you know what also was? It's not only that. On top of things that weren't in contracts or whatever, I was still fucked. I was still fucked where we had a deal with certain things that money was supposed to come in. And guess what? It didn't. And I had to bring it up and say, hey, where's this? Oh, there's 55,000 missing. Where the fuck is this? 60,000. Oh, Bob, sorry. My bad. Here we are. We got that. I was our apology. Get the fuck out of here. Y'all fucked me. Y'all fucked me. So here is the deal. Pay me the rest of my fucking money that is owed. And at the end of the day, guess what? You can still keep your promise that I own 30% of the show long term. You can still keep that promise, but that promise out the window. I'm not afraid of any repercussions. You guys fucked me. And you know what? You guys can run around with your little fucking John Shahidi, Kyle, Sammy, whatever the fuck you want. I don't give a fuck. I was one of the good guys that fucking poured my blood, sweat, and tears into that show and fucking built something up and got my fucking throat slit. Got my throat slit by a bunch of ass clown motherfuckers that I introduced my world to and they took advantage of them. They sucked the fucking life out of it. So at the end of the day, I'll say this. Give me my fucking money and go about your way. And that's it. And I am so motherfucking disappointed. And I'll call out Kyle. I am so disappointed. Because I think it was the higher ups. I think it was the Shahidis that made you go and be who you are right now. Because that's not who I met when I fucking met you. That's not who I fucking met. You fucked me. You know you fucked me. And that's that. So at least make it right. And no more skimming. I had to say it, buddy. I'm not afraid of shit anymore. I don't give a fuck. I'm already fucking where I'm at. Peace. So you saw Okay, so that's what uh, Bob meant. If you don't know, so this is about Full Send Podcast. Like, I watch them all the time. I love their podcast. Actually, I appeared on... An episode. Um, Bob didn't show up that time, but Six Nine was on an episode. Um, they invited me last minute. They wanted me to kind of be like, you know, someone who could kind of challenge on some rap shit, and I did. Um, for whatever reason, I think Six Nine was just in a certain type of place, and also the thing with Steve and Perkyo happened. Kyle did not put out that episode, and and um, it probably would never come out. But so, which by the way, the, you know, to kind of put in perspective, if y'all don't know what I'm talking about. This is a podcast, like, my two biggest episodes are with 6 9 They filmed an episode with 6 9 never put it out. Just because they just didn't want that to represent their brand. You get what I mean? Like, they just, like, yo, fuck it. Now, granted, they've interviewed the president. They've interviewed Dana White. They've interviewed um, Shaq. They've interviewed, they've interviewed so many huge people that as big as 6 9 is in the rap world, they've interviewed bigger. So they don't care, right? Um, the, 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 to give you a little bit more background, the Nelk boys, um, they got popular from doing like, you know, a lot of like skits and stunts, um, and, and pranks and shit like that. Um, I believe they're from Canada and they just kind of built up a following along the way. And, um, they have a formidable audience and I'm going to talk some podcast shit in a second, but anyway, Kyle did respond and Kyle said this, this is what he said. All right, guys, you guys know I don't do the back and forth shit on Instagram. I don't do the social media drama shit. That's seriously not my thing. But with all the shit that Bob has been lying about on social media, he's pretty much backed me into a corner now uh, and attacking something that I've built for 10 fucking years, poured my blood, sweat and tears into. So there's no choice. I got to clear some shit up. So first things first, Bob is saying on social media that we owe him money. That is a complete lie. We don't owe Bob Mennery a cent. He's also saying that he had the worst deal, a terrible deal for the podcast. But guys, in the 10 months that he was on the show, he made $1.2 million. $1.2 million in 10 months. I'm going to show you guys exactly what his deal was. So this is Bob's deal. I typed it out on screen on Instagram here too. Also, he had not one, but two different lawyers look over this deal. 
and it is extremely generous if you guys do not understand. I'm gonna pull it up here. So he got 30% of the ad revenue of the show. He never owned it. He always says he owns it. He never had ownership of the show. On top of that, he had 7.5K an episode, usually around 30K a month if that's four episodes. 50% of the podcast merch, which is insane. First class flights, hotels, transportation, all covered by us. The production, the staff, and the equipment, all covered by us. So Bob had no expenses. Everything production-wise was covered by Nelk. All Bob had to do was show up. Say too, I personally have taken 0% of any of the podcast earnings. Anything that I've technically made has gone right back into the show, paying for the staff, paying for the production, paying for the travel. But Bob's 1.2 million. On top of that, the opportunity to join the Full Send team and to get exposure, obviously from you guys, from the craziest fucking fan base on the internet, that's priceless. Like so many doors were opened up for him and the amount of huge brand deals that he got and did on his Instagram because of this, like it's insane. The thing I wanna talk about is Bob saying that he built the show, he got all the guests. Uh, I will give credit to Bob, he got some fire ass guests, but the vast majority of guests were gotten by Team Full Send. And he also took credit from Dana White for getting Donald Trump. All right, so I'm gonna make a next slide. I'm gonna put who got which guess. Too lazy to say it out loud. Okay, uh, is that it? Seriously, like I considered Bob one of my best friends. So I still have enough respect for him where I'm not gonna be pouring out personal details on social media. Um, but you guys see how he is on social media. And behind the scenes, his behavior became like completely uncontrollable. And, you know, like, I'm all about the work hard, play hard shit. No one is more than me. But my thing is when it affects the team and the staff and the operation and just full send as a whole, that's when I personally got to draw the line and, like, make a tough decision. So for months and months and months, I'm trying to figure this out. How can I make this guy happy? I'm working with him one-on-one. -on -one. I'm working with his manager. His manager's trying to work with him. Nothing's working and eventually he came to me with a brand new deal and it was the day before the game episode and he said, Kyle, you have 24 hours to sign this brand new deal or I'm not showing up to the game tomorrow. And I said, what the fuck, Bob? That's not realistic. You coming to me with a new deal and expecting me to sign it in 24 hours? That's not enough time. I said, come to the game episode tomorrow. Let's crush the episode. And you have my word, me and you, one-on-one, -on -one, we'll sit down, we'll figure it out. We will come to some sort of solution. Like, you're my boy, Bob. Like, we can figure this out. And I begged with him and I pleaded with him and he didn't show up. He missed the game episode. And instead of showing up, he just took to social media so quick and just started posting shit about me, just blasting me, posting lies. And to me right there, like that was the final straw. Like I felt so taken advantage of and disrespected for someone that was supposed to be my friend. Like a friend doesn't go to social media, no matter what, to blast you like that. That's something that a friend doesn't do. And I'll be honest, that actually really hurt me that Bob did that to me. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. After that, I was like, you know what? It's time to part ways. Uh, and this is gonna be the last time I talk about this, by the way. You're gonna see Bob talk about this. Okay. Um. Uh, the the only reason why I care about this, I do love the this. show. I do like, love the show. Uh, I, I listen to Full Send a lot. I think it's one of the best podcasts out. Um, I do I, I do want to give a little bit more educated um information to what I think on podcast business. Okay, because I do think at times people are. I want to give the most accurate information. You know, what I mean, I've gone through these negotiations. I've signed deals myself. I've turned down deals, and um, yeah, it's not my first rodeo. So, let me let me tell you how the Full Send podcast is set up. And for anybody who wants to get into podcasting or who hopes to get in the podcast game where you would want to sign a deal, this is very important for you to for you to know. Okay, so the Full Send podcast is usually revolving members of Nelk. Usually Kyle is always there, but you'll see revolving members. So it might be two or three members, and then it might be um, someone else. So it could be um, what's my guy who got all the muscles. I forgot what his name is, but it, it might be him. It might be, um, um, I guess, before Bob got fired, it used to be Bob. So I only say that to say this is a podcast with multiple hosts. 
th- th- let me tell you this, and, I, and I'll give you all a little bit of my business too. Off the record is academics podcast. There's no reoccurring recurring co-host. There's no no one reoccurring. There's no again what ha- what tends to happen with podcasts, and this is where you get Rory and Mealy Mall. Um, when people are reoccurring on podcasts, um, the bigger the podcast gets, they don't want to be paid a fee. They want ownership. Now, granted, if you created it with them, they should have ownership. But in certain cases, like, and I could use probably Joe Budden's podcast, I believe, you know, I believe Rui was probably there from early on, but it was called the Joe Budden podcast. It was Joe Budden and friends. It wasn't Joe Budden and everybody else. People tune in for Joe Budden. Now, granted, when he decided to keep people, um, he had to pay them accordingly, and he should. But this is where you always get problems. People feel they own shit they don't own. Back to this Nelk situation. Nelk. They're an established group. They're a group that has, you know, they're pushing a seltzer, Happy Dad. They have all these brand partnerships. The brand is pushing, right? The brand is pushing the um, um, everything else. is pushing the podcast. Now, very important, and I'll say this. If someone comes to work with me, if, even if I'm doing a new podcast, if if it's if that new podcast is going to be pushed by the brand of academics, I wouldn't give someone ownership in that. I'm gonna just be upfront. I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't do it because without the brand of academics, that podcast is nothing. That's why I could imagine why um, Joe Button didn't want didn't want to give ownership up. If without the the brand of Joe Button, the podcast is nothing. Again, you're not bringing anything to it. You're just a host at that point. When we talk ownership, we got to bring what you're bringing to the table. Are you only just bringing talent or are you bringing other things that are going to help the value of the podcast over time? Now, that's ownership. Ownership is something completely different. I thought this was a good deal. I'm going to tell you why. The reason why Everyday Struggle didn't work, when we were with Complex, Complex gave us a, a, a standard bump. So if we had an ad that month, you got to add a certain amount of money to your deal or, or to your invoice. So it, say we're getting paid, I'm making this up, $20. If we had an ad, you could add 15 more dollars. So if we had any ad, if we had one ad or we had 1,500 ads, you add 15 bucks to your $20. You're guaranteed 20, you add 15 bucks. So we would get 35 bucks, right? Where everyday struggle fell apart, Joe Budden was just like, well, y'all are charging really premium rates because we have a really hot show. So, so you know, he found out that they were signing ad deals for millions of dollars. We weren't even getting 100000 overall when it came to, like, all the ads. So they're getting 95% of the money that's coming in for the ads. Granted, this and, and this is where Complex kind of fucked up, but also, you know, Joe was wilding out too. The way to solve it is is this right here. Give a percentage of the ad revenue, right? Which means if my bookie comes in, Blue Chew comes in, whatever comes in, says, "Yo, we got a hundred thousand for like five episodes, or let's just let's say twenty episodes. Twenty episodes of y'all reading these ads for whatever, whatever. Okay, cool. It's a hundred thousand to the podcast. Now, unfortunately, and I learned this with dealing with bigger corporations, a hundred thousand isn't a hundred thousand. Which, by the way. Bob Menery sounded a lot like Rory and Millie Maul because he doesn't have the books, clearly. Like, he, he, he's talking about money, but he, he hasn't seen the books. When $100,000 comes in, say for 20 episodes, it's not, you're not deserved 70%, or, or no, you're not deserved 30%, which $100,000 would be 30000 30, According to the contract, that's what you, what you would think. I, th- there was a deal that came into Complex of $2 million. When I, when I did On the Sticks, $2 million Xbox signed on for. I'm like, fuck. My percentage on the, on the thing was like, and I'll tell you now, it's like 40, 45%. They had 55, I had like 45. I'm like, fuck, nigga, I'm getting a milli. This shit's going to be lit. I'm like, yo, I just made this shit up off my Twitch. I'm about to get a million dollars. What's up? It's litty, bro. I'm going to give you all the business down because I don't really don't think it should be weird. And it, the reason why these things keep happening is lack of education. I try to give you all education in everything I do. Okay, cool. The money comes in. What happens is the money is allocated at Per the the fucking company, I'm gonna give you another thing, right? When ad money comes in, usually it's not just net, or it's not it's not just gross. You're getting thirty percent off. It's usually net. So the money will come in. 
it'll pay for certain things that will be allocated a certain way. Like, for example, I remember having the arguments about Complex. So $2 million came in. It was 2.1, actually, from Xbox, Microsoft. I'm like, all right, bet, nigga. They can't, it, it, they, nigga, I was on the calls with them. Like, I'm going through everything. That's a big deal. We're about to go fucking crazy. Later on, I'm, I'm just wondering what, where my $1 million is at. Now, I ain't getting the $1 million. What happened? Then we started doing the business. And this is the reason why it's good for y'all to be independent creators, stop running to companies if y'all think that these deals means you're going to get a lot of money. Because there's always some other shit, right? Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that's what happened in here, but I'll give you the complex game. Two men comes in. This is what they do. They earmark. Any deal that comes in the complex via their sales team, you have to buy ads on their website. Have to. Like, so they're going to put part of the deal to the website. Them niggas didn't want the website. They wanted academic show. But of course, now, 400000 to the website. Hmm? Okay. Well, if you're buying into complex networks, you got to throw some shit to sneaker shopping and hot ones. So 600000 or 700000 for both of those. Wait, wait, what? Wait, hold on. Wait, them niggas wasn't on. A... Here's the point where I'm trying to tell you. By the time they, they tell you what's allocated to your show, granted, your show sold the deal. But you got to remember, they're complex. They don't only make money from you. They make money from everybody. So they cut that money up that came in, and they put it to every motherfucking person. 200000 to you, 400000 for the website, this, that, there, this, that, there. Because we had accounting, and I had accounting. That's why I never said complex robbed me. Nigga, you, don't, you can't tell them where to put the money. In the contracts they signed, they're going to say, yo, for, you have to buy this amount of advertising with blah, blah, blah. And they did it. So at the end of the day, my show probably only got like half a million, maybe 600000 600000 of funding out of $2 million, which I thought was a $2 million deal. When you see the books, you'll figure out what it is. You'll be like, "What? I know it's 2.1. What the fuck? Oh, no, that went to, 400 went to websites, 600 went over there, this went to there, this went to just like, you know, banner ads. Like, you're like, what the fuck? Now you're working with that for the show. Now when it comes to the show, here's it goes. Remember, it's not gross; it's net. So you get four, you get six hundred thousand for the show. When they're done paying for production, they're done paying your talent fee. They pay your producers. They pay editing. Basically, they like remember everything comes to complex, so it don't matter. It's in their benefit to say, "Oh, we only profited about seventy thousand dollars." Oh, you could get your your. You're cut off of the 70000 You're like, what the fuck, nigga? What about the $2.1 million? No, nigga. You get your cut off the 70000 What was allocated to your show, and then after we took every expense out of it, there's only 70000 in profit. Granted, everything is profit for them. Everything. Everything is profit for them because the, the, the ads on the website is profit for them. That's how it goes. Everything is profit for them. But what do you get? You only get what comes to on the sticks. So I'm looking at it, I'm like, so you're telling me from the big ass deal we got, y'all only allocated this to my show. And then not only that, when y'all done paying everybody, because now we doing these expensive sets and we renting shit, niggas is blowing through money. Like, I think we had wasted like maybe 50 grand one time. We booked some shit. We booked some shit to do an episode with a nigga. The nigga, was, the nigga was in New York while we was in Atlanta. Like, we just waste the money. We was like, that's out the budget. So they come to you and be like, well, yeah, out of all that, for the season, yeah, your cut is 30000 Of course, you get, your, you get your talent fee per show. But you're like, wait, wait, what? I only tell y'all that to, to tell y'all, a lot of times people think that they're... Uh, I, I'll give you another, I'll give you another um, 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 funny thing. When I argued with, with Spotify, when I argued with Complex, Complex gave me a, a, an option. This is Joe Left. So Joe Left, I'm the king. Anything I want, they're going to give me. It said, act what you want. I said, well, I want what Joe want. I'm just patient. I'm just not going to sit out with shows, whatever, whatever. But now y'all lost him. Y'all got to give me the shit, right? What Joe was asking for in percentage, I think they gave me twice. They gave me double. So what they would have gave to both me and Joe, they just gave to me. But they, before they did, they said, yo, you sure you want percentage 
or you sh or 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 remember we used to even when you and Joe was here, we'll give you all a, a definite bump. Like so, remember I told you we're getting twenty. We'll give you fifteen. They're like, all right, you know what? You, you, now you're getting you're getting twenty, but we're, we'll give you we'll give you thirty. We'll give you thirty as the bump, not fifteen. Thirty. So if there's an ad, fifty. And I remember thinking, no, nah, no, nah, fuck that, fuck that. It's ownership percentages. You know, Joe Budden's going on ownership, ownership. You don't own a show, brother. And you also don't own the accountant. That's what Joe learned. That's why he fucked them two dumbass niggas. When you own the accountant, you pay niggas what you want to pay them. Remember that? Yo, write that, print that, tattoo that. The contract means nothing. It's what the nigga who's collecting the money and allocating the money and showing the money wants to show. So I'm like, nah, nah. Give me the percentage. Do you know if I had taken the bump, which was going to be a higher bump, it's going to be like times probably like eight. If I had taken the bump that they offered, by the way, I never got paid with the percentage. So I took the percentage and I never got extra money out of pure principle. But you know why? I'm going to tell you why I never got, because every time they would come back to me and say, you know when you take the percentage, you don't make money unless the show is profitable. We're spending $2 million a year to make everyday struggle. So we got to make over $2 million for you to get a dollar. So if we make $2, two million and $1, you can take the percentage off of the dollar, not the $2 million, buddy. Sometimes we argue for dumb shit. And by the way, I see what's going on here. Um, here's why I think Bob is a little wrong. Complex isn't Nelk Boys. By the way, it's the podcast. Po the, gr the greatest thing about podcasts is opposed to like, you know, running like an everyday struggle. It don't take $2 million to shoot um, a show. It, it probably don't take $2 million per year to run this thing. You get me? Much cheaper, right? Also, you're going to get bigger brands. Also, Nelk in itself is bigger as a, you know, um, cultural brand for, the, for what culture they're in than Complex was for hip hop. They're getting lambasted with ads and brand deals up the ass. When you're like, when I, when me and Joe joined Complex, we helped Complex. When you join Nelk, Nelk is going to help you. They're already a big brand. So here's the thing. He says something very important. Let's do the math on this, right? Let's do the math on this. Fuck the, uh, fuck the, the fuck the 30% the of the ad revenue. I never seen them really do too much ads, right? So it's probably just YouTube shit, right? So that looks good on paper, 30% ad revenue, right? It looks good on paper, but you're not getting paid from that. I'm going to tell you where they probably really got paid. Or Bob really got paid. Remember he said $1.2 million. 7.5, um, so 7,500 7, per episode, right? That's about 30,000 per month, right? 30,000 per month times 12 months. That's about 400,000. Where the fuck did he get um um 800 extra thousand dollars this is the power of the brand 50 percent of merch yo nelk sells a shit ton of merch bro a shit ton of merch bro you get me and also maybe some of those state sponsorships like they probably were up in ad revenue see complex couldn't sell an ad to save their life these motherfuckers probably had like some steak and some other shit in there so think about it and by the way, this is how a regular podcast, like, you know, um, my first podcast offer, which I just thought it was disrespectful, they they offered me um, $300,000. Was it $300,000? $300,000 guaranteed for the year, okay? This is the first year, so I'm going to just tell you the first year. $300,000 guaranteed for the year, okay? And they offered me percentages kind of like this, right? Like, yo, it was like 50-50 on ad revenue, um, 50, 50 on ad revenue. And I might have a, like maybe better, better split on the merch. Here's the thing though. So you might be like, well, bro, you had a way better deal than him. And you're in a, um, 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 you're on a lesser uh, podcast. That's not as lit as him. Number one, here's the thing. I own my shit. Right. So like I'm the only host. So I'm the whole show, right? He's one of three or one of four people that's on a show. It's not his whole show. Right. So with you got to think about his deal and think about everybody like Wallow and Gilly's deal is going to be half and half. You know, what I mean, they're not going to get the same deal as a Joe Budden. Right. Joe Budden. I'm pretty sure all the ownership and all the shit comes to him. Whatever he pays people is whatever it is. So here's the thing, though. Right. 
The dude is one of three or one of two or one of four sometimes on the podcast, right? You're making this. I'm not going to say it's a lot of money. It's the 7.5K 7, 7. per episode. But if you're if you're with a um, brand like Nelk that could run up podcast merch, right? Like I remember we were trying to get like Complex to do merch. Bro, they couldn't figure it out, bro. They couldn't even agree on a design. I guarantee they probably gross at least half a million dollars in podcast merch. You know what I mean? So if half of that, well, obviously you don't got to pay for expenses and shit like that. So okay, let's say it was six hundred thousand or seven hundred thousand, and then the raw profit was five hundred thousand. If half of that goes to Bob, it makes sense if it's a good brand. Like the reason why I never signed for that, right? The reason why I never signed for that. And by the way, this is like the very, very first. This is my very first podcast offer. I never did a podcast. The reason I never signed for that, um, because at first I didn't know what to think about a podcast. Most of these companies you sign to don't bring nothing to the table. So really, all you're really going to get is your per episode fee. It's like complex. You're not getting no back end, my nigga. The back end sounds good. Like, don't be a fool to sign for back end when you know the company ain't going to be able to provide the back end. If the company can't sell merch or they don't have a merch team or they don't, they're not set up for merch, who cares if you own 50%? You're gonna get 50% of zero. If you're on a if you're on a if if you sign a contract that gives you 30% of the ad revenue and the ad team can't sell a fucking ad, great, you're getting 30% of zero. So you know what you you thought you signed the best deal, and at the end of it, all you're getting is this fucking per fee episode. So it looks good in theory, but here's the thing. When you're you're not the company, you don't control how the ads get associated. Or sometimes, you know what? I, I, like, me and Joe, we used to have this theory. Complex have zero incentive to get ads specifically for the show. Because it was only our show that had outside talent. Every other show they had had inside the company talent. And inside the company talent was entitled to no bump. No, no back end, no transparency. So why would the ad team work hard to get ads for a show where two niggas that don't work at the company, they're, they're contracted people, and they're going to see cuts out of the, uh, out of the money rather than get, get ads for other shows where them niggas ain't seen no money from it, from it. Remember, everything goes to complex at the end. So I look at this and I say, I think that Bob might have been tweaking a little bit just because, bro. You sign to a company or you sign to a podcast that has an established brand and they were going to run up the bag other ways. Their merch selling capabilities, their, their fucking brand deal capabilities, bro, you were going to win. $1.2 million and technically you should have made less than $90,000. Well, no, not $90,000. It was about to be thirty. No, no. Less than half a million. Bro, I don't think it was that bad. Now, we get into this other thing because I want to be fair to Bob. What I heard Bob said, he said, yo, um, he said I was supposed to own one third of the podcast. Now, this is where I look towards Ruri and Mealy Maw and, and Bob. I don't want to accuse you of being dumb like them because these two nimwits I'm talking about, they're the dumbest that could be. Owning a percentage of the ad revenue it's not ownership. I'm glad he put it right here. It's not ownership. When Joe wrote a contract with these dumbass niggas, they thought because they were entitled to certain percentage of the profits meant they owned a certain percentage of the company. The Joe Bun podcast is a company. The Nelk podcast is its own company, even if it falls under Nelk. Those are not the same thing. I was entitled to to a percentage of Complex's profits, but I, no, no, not Complex, I mean, Everyday Struggle profits, but I never owned Everyday Struggle. I never owned 1% of it, and I never thought I did. This is why you get idiots. And I am, and this is not to you, Bob, this is me taking shots of my other, you know, some ops I buried uh, back in the day in the desert. Um, they thought because in their contract it said they were they were entitled to a particular part of the revenue. They thought that was ownership. Being entitled to ad revenue does not mean ownership. 
if it doesn't say in language how the IP gets broken down, ownership of the intellectual property, that's ownership. And I got to give these business business tips because I know a lot of y'all still watch these little uh, um, uh, um, retard niggas like Rory or Mealy Mall, and they're the dumbest niggas I've ever heard. So again, y'all got to listen to it from a real nigga like me who ain't none of these podcast niggas fucking with me. I don't care which one you talk about. I'm over here cooling. They could get their awards. I'm over here. I'm living lovely. My business on point. You ain't never going to hear, oh, act don't own this, act own everything. And, and you'll never find a nigga that jump out and told my he own nothing with me. <laughs> if a nigga say that, I laugh my door. Okay? But I think I think my man Joe learned from that. Never give none of these bum-ass niggas ownership again. That's not shots towards these new guys. But still, like, they didn't build it. It's your shit, Joe. It is what it is. Anyway, little podcast 101. I don't know if you guys be having some business advice. You know, I try to give some game for free because hopefully if you if you have a podcast or you have whatever you're trying to grind into something, you're going to be in this position. And when you're in this position, you need to have a, a conversation with yourself. Who owns the shit? And then if you have people who work with you, what are they entitled to? First thing you want to know, what could you pay them solidly in terms of a, a salary? And then if they are um, content creators and you feel like they're that worthy, you could then put them in on the ad revenue, especially if they're helping to promote something. Okay. Other than that, tell niggas to kick rocks, man. Okay. Bob, I know you're going to probably respond. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear what you got to say, but, but I think it got shut down because um, Dana White, Dana White violated that nigga. I ain't gonna lie to you. Instagram Dana White. So Dana White, who like is a, the CEO of US UFC, he violated that nigga. He said, "Yo, Bob, keep me out of your crybaby bullshit. You're an absolute pussy." And I told you, and I told you that, and you are delusional, and you blew the biggest opportunity of your life. Now move on like a big boy. Yes, you introduced me to Kyle. Then fucking cried about it forever, so I gave you $50,000. You, so you would shut the fuck up, so now shut the fuck up. It's embarrassing. See? Hey, it's one of those things where if it's not in contract, 